So, Sevan, thanks for pushing me, because I'm not going to let you do more than me. And also, I hope that your back is doing okay, because I think you said that your back was a little bit flared up from doing snatches for the first time in a decade after doing all that assault bike riding. Yo, I was watching something earlier today. I want people to think, oh shit, I can go out and beat that dude. I want someone else who hasn't done this workout, who maybe is slacking, who does need some motivation, be like, I'll put that bitch down and go out there and beat my score. Like, I want that motivation. Olivia Kerstetter should be so proud of herself that she got this fucking old man to fucking come out here and do it. All right, that's all, that, at the end of the day, it's all matters. And I care that I'm passing that forward, and I do care what people think. Not that they think that I suck, but that they think that that they got a thought that they could beat me or, or that they want to beat me or that they can do it and then they just go out and do it. So this morning, I was driving to my client's house and I saw that Sevan put up one of the videos that looked like a vlog that he's doing. And I saw that he was going to do the age group online qualifier workout number three, which is all those snatches. The other day on his podcast, talking about the masters, I believe James Hobart and Brian Friend were on the call. They brought up the fact that Olivia Kerstetter had done 80 repetitions in this workout. It was three rounds of 10 snatches to buy in at ascending weights, followed by an AMRAP at that fourth bar for the remainder of the 10 minutes. 10 reps, minute break, 10 reps, minute break, 10 reps, minute break, and then AMRAP with the final bar. Sevan was challenged to do this. He's brought it up a couple of times about how he's completely debilitated from it. And I was thinking during this that Olivia Kerstetter almost did double Isabel at the male weight at the end of that workout. Now, last year, I did the semifinals for the Atlas Games in the garage standing right over there. I did them with the weights of 135, 185, 225, and 245. 245, I believe that I got nine repetitions last Last year that was the final barbell olivia kerstetter in her variation of it at 125 pounds which is 10 pounds off of the male isabel weight got 50 repetitions for a score of 80 total my score when i did my version was 39 i was watching sevan do this he got 37 reps i believe and then at the end of it he starts talking about how he wants to give some people motivation to do things that they are uncomfortable with i'll tell you what nothing is more uncomfortable right now for me than putting up a video of myself having been in the best shape of my life at this time last year and if you've been following along, you know that I've had this elbow injury. There's the scars on there. You got one there. You got one there. You got one up on the inside and there. They went in in three sites and they took out a little bit of a bone spur. It was causing me to have the inability to straighten this elbow. Well, it's getting to the point where it can straighten, but it still can't bend all the way. So this is what this arm can do. This is what this arm can do. It's still missing a little bit. It's hard for me to front rack a bar, but I just regained the ability to do a little bit of snatching. You know how I know that? I did this workout. Olivia Kerstetter did it. They talked about it on the Savan podcast and then I I heard Savan talking about how he wanted to see what he could compare and stack up to the 17-year-old Olivia Kerstetter, who completely dominated this workout. Savan calls himself the 50-year-old man. Well, I am the 30-year-old washed-up regional athlete that everybody likes to say who qualified for the semifinals last year, who did this workout at the semifinals, and I have not worked out in about three months. I say not worked out, but I've done a bunch of bike riding, very much like Savan, where I like to ride the assault bike. I'm trying to keep up my aerobic capacity. As everyone who watches these types of videos knows, there's no comparison to a good old CrossFit styled Metcon. So I was watching this vlog by Sevan and I've mentioned before to him personally how I don't like it when I feel as if people are doing more than me. So in the spirit of I don't want Sevan doing more than me, it was in that exact moment that I decided that the soonest I could, I would attack this workout. Haven't done a single snatch in about three, three and a half months. Haven't been able to lock out my arms in about three, three and a half months with the exception of the things done within physical therapy. And I'm not anyone to kind of dip my toe in the water and say, okay, let's see how it goes. I want to get full on into it. So I'm going to go ahead and see how many snatches I can get. 16 to 17 year old division of the age group online qualifier for the semifinals directly into the CrossFit games. I'm going to do a little bit of a play over it for you guys so you can see what's going on. And let's see how I stack up against Sevan and Olivia Kerstetter. Let's go. So the first thing you do, of course, is show your weight. So you can see there's a 15 on the bar with the clip. You can clearly see that that is a 20 kilogram barbell, so a 45 pound bar, 15 pound plate, 10 pound plate, and a five pound plate right there. Go on over to the other side, and I'm not sure where I start. Where do I start? I start showing the 15 pound plate on the barbell, along with the five pound plate on the floor, 10 pound plate on the floor. Again, there's a 20 kilogram barbell for your eyes to see very well, and a 15 pound plate. Here is the tape measure showing the start line where it is at zero. I used a piece, of, I used a chalk, show the entire tape measure, and then I have the other end of my handstand hold box marked off with the five foot increment that is required for you to start behind at the beginning of each round. Bring it on over, and I believe somewhere in here I talk about 
the workout, what my name is, and the age group and division that I am in completing this workout for. Andrew Hiller doing the age group online qualifier for the 16 to 17 year old female division. So on this workout, you have to have an ascending clock. So 10 seconds on the clock, it's counting upwards. You have to start behind the white line with the five foot increment behind it. Remember I marked that as the five foot start. And then the other end of that little square box is the far side. So the entirety of the workout has to be before. It is 10 snatches. This is the 75 pound barbell, 45 pound bar with the 15 pound weights on it. This is where I was a little bit sketched out. I don't know what my elbow looked like. I did take a couple of shots beforehand. Alexis was at home. I would have asked her to judge but it's just me in the garage. Hopefully extending the elbows, it looks pretty good to me. If you don't think it looks good, go ahead and let me know in the comments. There are my 10 reps, 24 seconds is the time in the clock, and then I switch out the weights. This workout, they were allowed to have somebody switch, so I don't know, what, I think Sevan switched his own weights, but if I could imagine, there's no reason for Olivia Kerstetter to be switching out her weights. It is a little bit of extra required work. She'd be bent over the bar at that time. However, because of her motor, I would not be surprised if she did it because she's a little freaking monster. Just a freaking monster, regular world monster. She's a beast. Start behind the line. So you're allowed to start at the 24 second mark. All right, here we go. We have three seconds until we got to move to the other side of the five foot line. So start behind it, 24 hits, start, move over the top. 10 reps of the 95 pound barbell. Ankles, knees, hips, extended, elbows. Elbows look pretty good to me. First snatches that I've done in three months. I have been doing a little bit of hinging work, very light, just trying to make sure that my hamstrings are able to do all of this. I was worried about my back exploding. When I have extended periods of time where I don't do a whole bunch of hinging, my back likes to get a little bit fired up. So I can tell you this workout, it didn't happen. I was pretty surprised about that. But 10 reps there, done it when I looked like 51 on the clock. Maybe it was 50. And then we have the blue plates which go on. And so I do that. Olivia, again, she didn't have to do that. Seven, I believe, did it, but we're going to 105. On the clock, the 51 strikes. I started what looks like 52, just to be sure. Didn't have a judge, remember. Going to do the 10 reps at 105 pounds. I'm pretty freaking happy with my ability to lock this bar out overhead. Remember, I have a little bit of an issue with the flexion. The extension looks good. That one, it looks like it's a little bit soft. Okay, it's not a qualifier. I'm trying to do the best that I can right here. And for the most part, I think that I'm doing pretty freaking good. All right, 10 reps here at the 105 pound bar. I saw 319. I remember looking at that knowing 320. So I started the next one at 420. Sevon's favorite number, 420. Here we go. Okay, here we go, Andrew. We've got five and a half minutes of talking. That's also the amount of time that we're going to be am wrapping this barbell. So 125 pounds. Olivia Kerstetter gets 50 repetitions at 125 pounds. The male equivalent is 185 pounds. That's an absurd amount of snatches at that weight. I was afraid whether or not I'd be able to get that number of snatches at this weight with what I've been working with, which again, if I remind you, I haven't done a CrossFit style workout in three months. Call me Tia Toomey. Haven't done CrossFit in three months, so I can just say that I haven't worked out in three months. This one, First thing where I've been putting my elbow into excessive under load end range of motion with the exception of physical therapy, which I wouldn't be saying is excessive by any means. They have you on like a BOSU ball straightening your arm out. And while I have been seeing a little bit of progress, it has stalled in my opinion. So it's been frustrating. The physician said as aggressive as possible. My physical therapist said that they've never seen that in a prescription before. So here is my version of as aggressive as possible. And I suppose I could have done this heavier it like the male RX weight, but I don't trust that. I want to see what's going on here. I saw that Sevan again did this workout. I thought it'd be pretty cool if I did the workout after Sevan had done the workout and see how I could compare to the monster that is Olivia Kerstetter in the freaking 17, 16 year old division semifinals, getting 80 repetitions. I was shooting to get the 50. I didn't know how many I could do. I just wanted to keep moving at a consistent pace and again, do something that would be cool, productive for my life and not let Sevan do more work than me. I have done Isabel before. I've never done double Isabel before. So this is the most consecutive snatches that I've done in something around this weight. I've never moved a 125 pound bar for rep after rep because it's a weird number. I have moved 135 for sets of 30, sets of 40, but I don't think I've ever done anything over sets of 40. And maybe I'll do double Isabel at some point to see what that would be like when I feel more comfortable with my body. But my Isabel time is 59 seconds. These are a little bit more deliberate repetitions where I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to blow my elbow out. And I think that they look pretty freaking good. I'm not moving anywhere near that pace. I told myself I would just do singles, do the first couple of rounds unbroken to give yourself the time to work with. So five and a half minutes, 
if I just did 10 reps a minute, I was good to go. And from what it looks like, I think that I'm holding about 10 reps a minute. Again, I'll count these up by the time I'm done. And I'm curious, what do you guys think? They look good to me. My right elbow is the one in question, and I think that's the one that's the one on the side of the pull-up rig. So look at the elbow on the side of the pull-up rig. To me, it looks as if it's getting pretty straight. And if I were to have to do clean and jerks, that would be a little bit more of an issue here. I do know that I bounce this bar not off of my hip, so I'm not making hip contact with the snatch, which would be a more efficient and better snatch. Yes, no one's going to be shocked by that. It is a weird spot that I'm hitting it. I have longer arms. It gives me a better deadlift. So my deadlift is my best lift. However, when I need to do rep after rep with a wider grip to get the bar into my hip pocket, I need to bend over further. I've mentioned somewhere in this video that when I do high rep hinging work, my back tends to blow up. One of the things that I know that I do to circumvent the back exploding is I keep my torso a little bit more upright. So if I can get my hands narrower for what ends up being about 50 to 60 repetitions here on this power snatch, if I can get my hands narrower, then I want it, then it allows me to keep my torso more upright and less bending over rep after rep after rep, which to me is a good thing over the course of this. I know that it isn't the prettiest snatch in the world because you can see it's clearly bouncing off of my quads. I have a mark on my quads from where I was bouncing it off of, but feels good to me. Looks decent enough. I move efficiently. I feel as if my heart rate stays under control and just moving for five and a half minutes, which is the most that I've done in again, three months. This is where I believe I start to slow down a little bit, maybe break down a little bit right there. It still looks pretty good. It looks like my right shoulder is internally rotating a little bit. The physical therapists say that I have a very wound up chest. That's no surprise. I spent my, the entirety of my high school career bench pressing like a lot of the males that I know. Everyone wanted to bench press one plate, then two plates, then three plates. Like, hey, who can do 300 pounds in high school? That was a big thing. So I have a much longer history of that along with swimming. So the swimming hits the lats very hard. All of that likes to make my shoulder internally rotate. You can't see it here at all. Here's a side profile. As long as the bar stays in front of my five foot section, that is okay. So I was being pretty aware of where that right side of the bar was. It is on this side of the barbell. It's hard to tell from there. If I were submitting this video, this would probably be no good because it looks right there actually like the bar is on the wrong side of the line. And I turn it over as I was thinking that. I'm like, okay, I'm trying to make sure this looks like a pretty good submission video. I'm gonna make sure it turns over a little bit. That one would have probably had been a no rep because I didn't show complete control at the top of the repetition. That one also, I was a little bit toesy. I didn't show control. The knees were not extended at the top of the rep. So I'm getting a little bit sloppy. I was aware of that. I don't have a judge here telling me to be a little bit more diligent. Remember in an online competition, it's on the job of both the athlete and the judge to be moving as good as possible so that you aren't putting yourself in a position to get a bad penalty call on the back end. I would say that those two repetitions back to back would have also been no reps. Hopefully that doesn't ruin my score and it doesn't allow Olivia Kerstetter to beat me on this workout. Maybe the online judging team would say, hey, you had a handful of no reps in here. Those two would give you a minor or a major penalty. So even if I did beat her, they would knock off 15 to 20%. But I'll let you guys be the judges of this because that's the goal of this, right? I wanna put this video up so that you can all see. Right there, I contemplated doing double Isabel. Uh, but I was just like, hi, this is the first thing I've done in a while. I'll take whatever I've got right there. I don't want to do a couple of more reps. I think that I ended at 54. I still I was going to double check. So I'm going to double check right now and let you guys know how many repetitions I got. <sighs> So after the review, it looks like I got 82 repetitions. I did give myself a no rep on that second one. Who knows what the video review team would have said about it, but by the looks of it, there wasn't complete control at the top. My hips were a bit extended, so that one was a no rep. So 54 reps and two reps taken off because they can do that. It's not major or minor. They can also remove a couple of repetitions. It's happened in the past. Two reps off, 82. Two reps more than Olivia Kerstetter. I officially can beat the 17-year-old Olivia Kerstetter. Woohoo, good job, Andrew, whatever. Olivia that's incredible. That'd be like me doing that many repetitions at a 185 pound barbell. I guarantee you that I cannot do that clearly because I can do this many at this weight. I was able to get nine at the 245 pound bar when I was in my best shape last year, 2021 at the Atlas Games. I see that some of the best scores for the 35 to 39 year old division at the 245 pound bar this year are 20 to 21 repetitions. I think Sam Dancer was one of the top names on the leaderboard on that workout. One of the things that I think is cool and that I 
I like to do and I don't know how many people do is take splits and at certain points in time of the workout. So I was doing every 10 reps. How much time did that take? So my first couple of repetitions, I believe it was 53 seconds. And then there was a 109 split and a 110 split. And then one of the things I always say in my program is you should try to go faster on the back end. After one of the 109 or 110 splits, the next 10 repetitions were done seven seconds faster at 103. The negative splits are very important. I see it at the top. You remember, you could always see Rich Froning trying to speed up at the back end of the workout. It's something that you can ingrain into yourself as you do your training. And you always know the person who comes out way too hot and then peters out at the end. It's always better to be the person who can keep on moving. And then even better, if you can move faster at the back end, it means that you paced it correctly. So although I am in the worst shape that I've been in in almost a decade due to the stupid elbow, due to the fact that I care more about the YouTube videos than I do about my fitness, fitness is still a top priority. And I do think that it's cool that the negative pacing that I've tried to ingrain into myself over the career that I have done with CrossFit still is there and that I still have the capacity to get a handful of reps at something close to the Isabella weight. It'll be interesting to see what happens with me and my body over the course of the time that I can like introduce these movements back in. The big takeaway from this whole thing is of course, Sevan did this workout. He wanted to motivate somebody to do the workout. He motivated me to do it. I was in my car and I was like, I am going to do that the first second that I have a chance to do it. Olivia Kerstetter put up some ungodly awesome score to the point where I looked at it and I was second guessing whether or not I'd be able to even get close to that score. It was scary. I remember I was getting into that. I go, here we go. 50 reps at 125. I have no idea what that's going to feel like. I haven't put a bar over my head in 90 days. What's the fitness left in this freaking tank, Andrew? And that's one of the cool things about CrossFit in general. Everybody has like their things that they're reaching for, shooting for, and the things that scare them that make them do better. Maybe just like Sevan, seeing the score of Olivia Kerstetter and and having somebody ask him to do the workout, then doing it, then making a video. Now I'm making a video. Maybe somebody will do it and we can just call it this the Kerstetter challenge. How many repetitions can you get of the 125 pound barbell? I would bet somebody like Justin Medeiros maybe gets 80, maybe 90 repetitions. 90 would be triple Isabel in what would end up being probably a six minute window. So we can do Isabel every two minutes for the remainder of that workout. I don't put it past some of the games athletes to be able to do that sort of thing. Call it the curse header challenge if you want. So Sevan, thanks for pushing me because I'm not going to let you do more than me. And also I hope that your back is doing okay because I think you said that your back was a little bit flared up from doing snatches for the first time in a decade after doing all that assault bike riding. Anybody does this, go ahead and tag either him or me or Olivia, and we'll just call it the Cursed Editor Challenge. So go do the Cursed Editor Challenge, which is just the semifinal workout from this year's online qualifier for the age groups, CrossFit games, directly into the games. If you like this video, let me know. If you do this workout, post in the comments. Andrew Hiller, out.